Tonight on First News. Fire destroys a small mill near Terrace. The Coast Mountain School District will soon decide on an anti-drug program for its schools and the last official day for cleanup at Ground Zero in New York. From the studios of NTV, First News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. The B.C. government and doctors have finally found a way to heal their rift. They've worked out a tentative agreement to divide up almost $400 million in physician funding, ending a series of service withdrawals that resulted in office closures and cancelled surgeries across the province. Doctors will get an 11.3% fee increase, improvements in on-call pay, and a binding third-party dispute resolution system. The proposal was approved by the BC Medical Association Board during a meeting in Vancouver today and will go to the general membership by a mail-in vote. In local news now, it was one of the biggest fires in the Terrace area in the last five years, according to Thornhill Fire Chief Art Hill, and losses are estimated at over half a million dollars. An industrial fire in the Jack Pine Flats area gutted Jake Penner's shingle mill, and this is what's left of the mill this morning. Little more than twisted metal and burned out buildings. The fire broke out at around 6.30 last night, consuming several buildings, mill equipment, and even a forklift. A nearby deck of logs also caught fire. Hill says 36 firefighters from Thornhill, Terrace, and the BC Forest Service battled the blaze for several hours. Two of them also suffered minor injuries. And a fire investigator from Prince George visited the scene today, and it's believed that sparks from a waste burner fanned by swirling winds caused that fire. Thornhill Fire Chief Art Hill says an examination of the smoldering ruins today showed two or three spot fires rather than one large fire. Nine people were employed at Copper Mountain Cedar Products. Some minor flooding of the Bulkley River near Smithers is expected today. The Provincial Emergency Program says the Bulkley is running at bankful conditions there. It's expected to peak late today and levels are expected to drop later on tonight. The river has already peaked at Houston. The good news is that a PEP helicopter surveillance flight this week indicated that the snowpack that feeds the upper Bulkley is nearly depleted. That means, barring another heavy rainfall, the river should start dropping. Meanwhile, the Skeena River is surging right now. It rose one meter in the past 24 hours, according to the measuring station at USK, and it could reach first alert flood stage by tonight. Skeena Valley homeowners are advised to take precautions and be ready to protect their homes against flooding. The snowpack feeding the Skeena is still very high. Well, after seven months on the picket line, workers at a Prince Rupert grocery store finally have a new contract. The UFCW members have ratified a new contract with Extra Foods. The union says the deal includes wage increases and a signing bonus, better job provisions and other improvements. In January, members had rejected what the company had then called its final offer. UFCW Local 1518 President Brooke Sundin admits the strikers didn't get everything that they wanted, but he says it's a good agreement. And the Liberal government is streamlining the appeals process at the Workers' Compensation Board. New legislation will reduce the number of appeal levels at the WCB from 3 to 2 and set up new independent appeals tribunal as the final level of appeal. Labor Minister Graham Bruce says both workers and employers have complained in the past that the current appeal process takes too long and has been a major source of frustration. He says the new system will speed up that process and make it more fair. The Coast Mountain School Board hopes to decide next week whether it will endorse the D.A.R.E. program for use in its district schools. The Terrace Teachers Union opposes the idea, but parents are pushing for it. More on the debate now from NTV's Kathy Brooks. Kids at a couple of private schools in Kitimat and Terrace are already taking the D.A.R.E. anti-drug lessons. Parents have been pushing the public schools to offer it too. RCMP officers present the lessons, sometimes with helpers like this high school student. 
The Terrace Teachers Union says the 17 hours of lessons take too much time from other subjects, and it's not convinced it's worth it. A lot of the studies that we've found about the D.A.R.E. program, uh, their findings um, show that it's an ineffective program. And uh, the, a big factor, of course, is now even D.A.R.E., the, the uh, program originators themselves are saying that I, uh, the program is too long and it's ineffective. You can get studies that say a lot of different things. Um, to me, what's more important as, as a parent is that this program is running. It, uh, it is running with the consent of the union in, in many locations, and the, it's, it seems to be successful. It, it, it's receiving awards. The teachers' union has suggested a drug and alcohol education program be developed locally. It notes D.A.R.E. depends on the availability of RCMP officers, so they'd like other community members involved as well. I really do support, and the parents do support, looking at other programs, but this is a program that's available now at no cost. It's, it's ready to go. It's not really a, a good thing to, to put a, a faulty tool in your toolkit, is it? And uh, we think that's what that would be. The teachers admit a time frame for a locally developed program can't be guaranteed. The Coast Mountain School Board will consider its options again next week. Kathy Brooks, First News, Terrace. The lack of sockeye in the Skeena River will leave a big hole in this year's commercial fishing season. With an expected return of only about a million, there will be no commercial fishing in Area 4. Last year, the area attracted about 600 gill nets. Area Chief with Fisheries Management, North Coast Division, David Einerson, says they'll try to conduct openings in other areas to keep the fishermen busy. He says the Nass, Kitimat area and the Central Coast, along with the Queen Charlotte's later on, will open as funds develop. Fisheries and Oceans Canada says they'll be monitoring the area on a daily basis, and if the returns are better than expected, they'll know quickly and could possibly reopen the area. Port Edward is being hit with substantial losses in their transit system, and the province has refused to put up any more cash. Port Edward Chief Administrative Officer Ron Bedard says they're preparing for a $3,000 shortfall next year and $5,000 the following year. Bedard says it'll likely be the municipalities taking the fall for lost revenue as the province has flatlined its contribution. The goal is now to look at all options to prevent fares from rising. Transit now costs Port Ed about $35,000 to $40,000 a year. We have lots more news on Lisa Ostrakoff coming up in just a moment with sports. First, though, let's take a look at the region's weather forecast. Taking a look at the satellite picture, while the southern part of the province will benefit from a weak ridge of high pressure, a huge low-pressure system remains off our coast here and will continue to give us clouds and rains going into the weekend. Now, here is tonight's winning weather picture. It is by John Lee from Prince Rupert. Uh, congratulations. You have won a free dinner at McDonald's. Now, here's a look at the local forecast. On the coast tonight, scattered showers with a low down to 7 degrees. Tomorrow, also some scattered showers with a high of 11, low down to 7 degrees. And going into the weekend on Saturday, a few clouds with a high of 13. Once again, a low down to 7 degrees. For the Terrace Kinemat area tonight, also scattered showers with a low down to 5. Tomorrow, a few showers, mainly a bit of sun peeking out here and there with a high of 13, a low down to 5. And for Saturday, though, mainly cloudy, still warm, though, with a high of 17 degrees, a low down to 5. And finally, for the Bulkley Valley Lakes District today, cloudy with some clear breaks. Looks good there with a low down to 3 degrees. And um, some last-minute player injuries are affecting, obviously, the roster. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And we'll have details for you right after the break. In national news, Prime Minister Jean Chrétien made it known today that he's ready for battle. And he's warning people not to leak information that could be embarrassing for his party and suggesting there could be swift action for those who dare defy him. This after several conflict of interest reports involving several ministers over the last few days. Julie Van Dusen reports. The other day, the Prime Minister said he loves problems, thrives on them. Well, he's got a growing pile to tackle. A string of cabinet ministers are under fire. Justice Minister Martin Cochon, Immigration Minister Denis Coderre, Solicitor General Lawrence McCauley, and House Leader Don Boudria, all caught up in a growing controversy over ethics. Gave me the name. The Prime Minister wonders where all the leaks are coming from. Yeah, I love fights, you know, and uh, I would like to have the name of the people who are, you know, 
double crossing the rest of the caucus and the cabinet. Uh, I think it just shows the prime minister who uh, is losing control and he is blaming everyone he can find. Now to add insult to injury, liberals watch as their former rival is rubbing their noses in it. What a legacy. Last night, former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney was regaling Tories at the Liberals' expense at a fundraiser in Halifax. Decades from now, when people remember Mr. Trudeau for his constitution, or myself for free trade, or Mr. Pearson for the flag, this is going to be what the Chrétien government is remembered for. Don't pay attention, you know, I've been called worse name by better people. But after all, Jean Chrétien swept to power, promising to restore public trust and confidence in government after the years of scandals that plagued Mulroney. Nine years of corruption and cynicism have been a, a big blow to the soul of the nation. Now this is the kind of cartoon that stares back at liberals, and some wonder if this is what the prime minister wants for his legacy. Containing the ethics controversy has become a challenge for the government and some editorial writers and a former clerk of the Privy Council are saying that it may be time for Jean Chrétien to step down. But he says he has no intention of doing that. After all, he says he's 30 points ahead of his rivals in the polls. Julie Van Dusen, CBC News, Ottawa. And more problems for the feds. A new report out today by the Defence Committee of the House of Commons says the military needs more money immediately or it will collapse. Paul Hunter has that story. After 14 months, 92 witnesses and 39 meetings worth of studying the armed forces, this parliamentary committee has many recommendations to improve Canada's military, but the biggest? Give it more money. It needs it. With the very best of intentions in terms of wanting to help a troubled world, we have done so to the point of wearing out our equipment and much more importantly, our people. Want evidence? For one, Canada's ground troops in Afghanistan are coming home this summer because they're worn out. The military doesn't have the resources to replace them. In fact, there have been years of other studies and reports with similar findings. Today's is just the latest to call for more cash. It wants a 50% increase in the defense budget over three years, from 12 to $18 billion a year. It may sound like a lot, but... I mean, just to put this thing in context, if the current defense budget was doubled, and I'm not suggesting that it should be, from 12 to $24 billion, we would still be less than the NATO average per capita. Now, if that doesn't make us embarrassed, nothing should. Enough to spark immediate action on the report by the new Minister of Defense, John McCallum? I just received it three minutes ago. He like wants to read it my, uh, carefully, he says, before commenting. The Prime Minister, having heard calls for more military money before, was unoptimistic, noting there are many others who need more government money as well. We have to help our farmers, and uh, there is a problem of softwood lumber. So there is all sort of demands on the government, and we don't have unlimited resources. The Prime Minister did say the next federal budget will have some more money for the military, but the MPs who wrote today's report say if it isn't a lot more, the price will be an even lower morale than the military has now, and soon enough, an inability for the armed forces to carry out even some of its basic functions. Paul Hunter, CBC News, Ottawa. Finally tonight, tens of thousands of New Yorkers stood in silence at Ground Zero today, mourning lost loved ones during the official end to the recovery effort. Steve Irwin has more. No need to ask for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for the 343 firefighters killed in the collapse of the World Trade Center. Today, a bell began the ceremony, marking the end of the cleanup of Ground Zero. Thousands gathered, firefighters, police, the families of victims, and the construction workers who labored around the clock for nearly nine months, searching for bodies and removing a two million ton mountain of debris. There were politicians on hand, but no speeches, no words, just reverence and respect and symbolism. An empty stretcher to represent those whose bodies have not yet been found. And a salute to the last steel beam left standing when the towers collapsed. All that remains of the 100-story Twin Towers is a six-hectare pit. Today was an extremely emotional very, very sad day. 
2,823 people were killed here, but the remains of only 1,102 have been found. That has left thousands angry that the recovery has been ended. They should have kept on looking, and I hope to God that they do not build anything there. There's still dead people there. Their spirits are still there. If they do that, they don't have no heart. But for most, the ceremony marks a beginning, not an end. I think it's the best feeling I've had s since it all happened because there's so much misery was there and now it's not. And I think I could come visit now. <laughs> I, I couldn't come before, I just couldn't come. As for what is to become of Ground Zero, the various interest groups have so far agreed on only one thing. A large part of this battered landscape will be set aside as a permanent memorial so those who died here will not be forgotten. Steve Irwin, CBC News, New York. And that is our report for tonight. I'm Laura Fominoff, and for all of us here at NTV, thanks for watching and have a great evening. We'll see you back here tomorrow after World Cup Soccer. Good night.